The move over the past couple of years has been to be able to work with technologies anytime and from anywhere using any device, including traditional desktops and laptops, smartphones, tablets, and even e-readers. Outlook 2013 has a lot of features to make working both on and offline easier and more efficient. For those mobile devices like smartphones, we may require the use of Exchange Active Sync, which is a brand new service for Exchange server accounts. It pushes email to mobile clients through wireless connections. This is a huge part of what is allowing us to utilize Outlook with our current phones and devices. It may be hard to believe that we can actually at some time in our lives be without all of those devices. And if we are, we may still want to connect to Outlook. For many years, Exchange Server has provided the ability to use Outlook Web Access, or AWA. This has evolved to the current iteration, which is known as the Outlook Web App. It offers access to our Exchange-based email, contacts, calendar, and so forth, without requiring a computer that has Outlook software installed. It only requires an internet browser. So to take a look at this, we, of course, are going to close out of Outlook, or at least minimize it, and go to a browser. The Office web app offering allows users to create, modify, and manage documents without actual Office software. It's most commonly found with Office 365 and or SharePoint implementations, so you may or may not have access to it. What's so nice about it, though, is all we need to do is open the browser and enter a URL. In this case, our email all comes through the pckeys.com domain. So if we type that in, we get to see a SharePoint homepage, which prompts us to log in. We'll click or tap on Sign In on the upper right side of the screen. Here, we'll be prompted to log in as a user. We'll go ahead and sign in with a different user ID and log in as Michael. And then, of course, we're required to enter the password. This actually could be a very good example of why Michael might want to use the web access. If he's using a computer that isn't his and it doesn't have his version of Outlook installed, he may want to access it anyway without having to go through a lot of different configuration. In this case, opening the browser, going to the website, typing in the username and password, and pressing enter or clicking or tapping sign in is all that has to happen. The screen will refresh, and at the top center of the screen is the option to go to Outlook. Here we get to see all of the information that Michael used to see in his own personal version of Outlook. Of course, this is not the full-blown Outlook application with all the bells and whistles and features, but all the main functionality is here, including working with email, as we can see, being able to access the different folders like deleted items, draft, the inbox, junk mail, and sent items, we can manage folders, and we can also work with the calendar and contacts. We have search capabilities from the top part of the screen, and we also even have the ability to work with a few options and the address book on the upper right. When finished, all we need to do is click or tap Sign Out, especially if we're on a public computer. Remember, for safety reasons, we always want to completely close out of an application and the browser if we're using it on a public computer. So we're not really finished in this case until we go ahead and close the browser itself. The evolution of the Outlook web access to the Outlook web app, along with its related Office web apps, brings the circle of offline and online access to a close. It allows us to not only access Outlook information with our own devices, connected or not, but also now using any internet-enabled device from anywhere in the world. And that is really a very powerful option.